I'm Pam Fox at pamfox.org and in tonight's video I'm going to be making uh, the avo pesto pasta dish. Hi Anne. And we're going to be talking about the difference between knowing um, the importance of dietary, the importance of stomach acid and um, dietary acid when it comes to reflux and understanding the difference between the two. And I'm sorry I'm getting on here late. It's been a very, very long day. It's been a long four days. Um, I'm a little exhausted and it's been a long day, but I'm very hungry and I've been looking forward to this all day. So this is actually a really quick and easy meal and it's extremely flexible like all plant-based cooking is. Um, this is just a pasta dish. I'm just going to be eating pasta tonight, so I'm not serving a salad or bread or anything like that with it. So I've gone ahead and started my pasta. Um, usually when I buy a pasta, I always look for these organic pastas when they go on, on sale and then I stock up on them. These are organic pastas. Linguini is my favorite pasta, like so here I have a whole wheat version, just a regular um, regular pasta version of um, organic linguini. So I've got that, I just put that in, it's cooking. And this dish, this recipe, it has leeks and carrots and mushrooms, but you could do anything. You could just do the sauce, you don't even have to put vegetables in it, it just adds more color and variety and texture and nutrients. Um, but you could just do the avo pesto sauce and then serve it with a salad. Um, tonight I'm going to be throwing in some broccoli just because I have some leftover broccoli. And I do have all the other ingredients except I'm out of walnuts. So I'm actually going to be using, um, instead of walnuts, in the pesto sauce, I'm going to be using hemp hearts. I just keep these in the freezer. These I buy these at Costco. And they're just a seed and they're, they're nutty. And so they add that nuttiness and they add a little bit of fat to, um, to the sauce as well. If you guys haven't ever bought these before and you buy them and you think they've gone bad, they haven't gone bad, they just look moldy, but they're not. <laughs> Hemp hearts have a little bit of a blue cheese look to them like they're moldy. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. So I've got um, my nonstick pan heating up back there. And so we'll start. I did clean my kitchen before I got started, so a little bit more disorganized than usual, but I'm just going to get rid of that. This is my leek. This is a big one. It's a nice fat one. I've seen them fatter than that, but hang on. I'm just going to wash this really quick. lovely leeks. A lot of times these will have sand in them if you don't wash them really carefully, like take them apart first, <laughs> which is what I'm finding now. Um, you don't want sand in your food, so I'm going to go ahead and just run the water over these before I stick them in the frying pan. The sand just gets it kind of in between the layers. So I'm just going to run some water over those. There we have our beautiful leeks, dripping water <laughs> into the frying pan. These are organic carrots, so I'm just going to give them a little bit of a peel. I'm going to cut these sort of thin. I think the recipe calls for shredded carrots. Yeah, it does. I honestly do not know where my shredder is. <laughs> I moved into this apartment in, well, it's been about six months, and I'm not sure where my shredder is, my box shredder. I don't use it that often, but the last time I needed it, I, I couldn't find it, so I'll just slice these up kind of thin and then give them a little bit of a quick chop. So again, this is just adding a little bit of color to the dish and of course more vitamins. And then I've got just a little bit of leftover broccoli. 
broccoli, so I'm going to toss that in. You know what? No, I'm not. <laughs> that broccoli's been in the refrigerator for about a week and a half. And it smells funky, so I'm going to pass on it. I'm going to pass on the funky broccoli. All right, so here are some mushrooms. Uh, these are uh, sliced, these are on sale too. These are sliced cremini mushrooms and they're organic. Um, this huge box was on sale for $2.99, which I thought was a pretty good deal. I'm just going to put these right in whole. So you could chop these up a little bit finer if you wanted to. I'm just going to put about a cup of those in and break them up a little bit to get that cooking and then we'll start our sauce. Turn that fan off. It's kind of loud. Okay. All right. So for the sauce, I have my basil here and I'm just going to take the stems off. The thick part of the stems and I am just going to slice this up a little bit and then I'm going to put it in the food processor to make the sauce. So I have here, I didn't realize, I cut into an avocado and I didn't realize that I had a half of avocado so these are not looking too fresh but as you'll see in a moment they're just kind of oxidized because of the exposure to the air, so they're still good. So in goes that half, so if we just kind of scrape back that brown stuff, they're still good. Hope everyone's doing well tonight and is um, doing well on the diet. All right, so we're gonna do just, I don't know, just a little scoop of these hemp hearts to give it, again, it just gives it a little bit of fat, it gives it a little bit of nuttiness. I mean, in a traditional pesto, it's got like pine nuts, basil, Parmesan cheese, and olive oil, and some garlic. That's a traditional pesto, so, um, so you can use pine nuts, really any nut will do. I only have sunflower seeds, these, and cashews. And cashews are a little on the sweet side. I didn't want to add in, um, I didn't want to make this sauce really sweet. So I'm gonna give this a little stir. Actually, I'm gonna add uh, a little bit of my pasta water to this. Remember, because I'm cooking oil free. So just to kind of keep it from sticking. And we'll go ahead and blend the sauce. So we're almost done. I think my pasta is getting really close. And then we're going to talk about stomach acid. pasta water to the sauce to thicken it out. A little bit more. I like it creamy but I also like it saucy so I don't want it too thick. That's really good. So I'm going to add a little bit of salt to this. Um, you could add salt or you could add liquid aminos to this. I'm just going to add a touch of salt. It doesn't really need it, but maybe just a little bit, not much. Maybe a half a teaspoon. 
And then I think this calls for sumac as well. Let me just double check. Um, sumac to taste as a topping. So you could add that into the sauce. I think I'll just wait and, and put it on top of my dish. tastes very pesto-y. In fact, it's, it's super creamy, which makes it a nice alternative to pesto. Usually pesto, you know, it's quite oily from the olive oil. Well, a couple of those, a couple of those basil leaves didn't get all the way chopped, but you can see it's very creamy. And this is a high fat dish. I mean, it's got the avocado, it's got the hemp hearts, um, but they're plant fats. So, you know, some people maybe would not tolerate this in terms of reflux because it is a higher fat content. I mean, really, you just have to um, <laughs> you really just have to try and see for yourself. I'm going to give that one more spin because there was a couple of leaves up that got up on the side. Pasta is not quite ready, just about. Uh, so one thing I can do is, so this is me, I love these, Kalamata olives. I also love green olives. I love olives. So I'm going to chop up a few of these just to do as a topping. Or you can put these, sometimes I just put them right in, you know right in with the, the dish too. But I'm just gonna use these as a, a topping for this individual serving of pasta that I'm making for myself. I'm almost ready to plate this up. I think that pasta is just about ready. I hate using the stove because it's perfect and it's got the levelers on the bottom, but here's the thing, like it's the burners that are crooked, like these lean in this way, and these lean in this way. So if I raise it up to account for this, it just makes this one more crooked, you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> it's the burners are crooked, so there's no winning. And they're very small, like, look how tiny, they're little, and then this is my biggest burner, and even it's on the small side, though. So. All right, but we make do. Okay, so, I'm going to drain my pasta. I'm actually going to put that back in a little on the wet side. Those starches. And so I put my pasta back in here, and it's just going to kind of mix then the wet pasta with this sauce, and it's just going to make it a little bit saucier, because it's a very thick, it's a very, you saw how, it's very creamy, I mean it's avocado. And so I've got enough there for tomorrow, <laughs> for my lunch tomorrow, I'll just make more pasta for this. So I'll make sure and put that um, in a sealable container because that avocado likes to oxidize, you know, if it's out and exposed to air for too long. All right, so this looks good. I'm just kind of stirring all that sauce into the pasta. I don't know if I'm 
going to be able to eat all this. I made a lot because I am really hungry. I had a long day and I got, I was out late and I got home late. <laughs> so uh, there's a lot of pasta, but we'll see how it goes. So I'm just going to put half of this on here because I'm going to save half of it for my lunch tomorrow. And you could stir this in with if you wanted in the pot. I'm just going to put it right on top and then I'm going to put a few of these olives on here as well. And that's it. And so the only thing is left is a little bit of sumac if needed. I'm going to go ahead and taste this and we'll see if it needs the sumac. Remember the sumac is the lemon, the le in Mediterranean uh, lemon spice. Okay, so I'm going to try this. It's hot. Looks good though. I'm just going to try this. <laughs> I really like those leeks. Oh my gosh, I'm so hungry. Mm. Oh, I hope you guys try that. It is delicious. All right. Just a couple more bites and then we'll start our topic. Tonight's topic is so important and I wanted to save it towards, you know, closer towards the middle and the end of the month for a reason. We're also going to be talking about vitamin B12, not tonight, but I'm saving that for a little bit later towards the end of the month as well for a reason. Mmm. 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 I love pasta. It is one of my favorite foods. And I love linguine because it's just really got a lot of bite to it, you know? You can still wrap it around your fork. It's got a lot of, I don't know, just bite to it. Probably angel hair pasta is my least favorite just because, I don't know, there's not much, that much to it. Mmm. Great color too with the carrots, and the green and the orange. Very good. All right, one more bite. And those olives really add a nice salty, tangy flavor as well. Mmm. Mmm. If you're just joining, um, or if you're watching on the replay, make sure you um, uh, leave your comments in the comment section below, and I'll, I will try to get to those after the live, tonight or tomorrow. Um, but tonight's topic is um, knowing the difference and understanding your, your stomach acid and then diet, dietary acid and the difference between the two. So. Um, First of all, in, in your stomach, when we eat food, the body produces and secretes stomach acid. And it's 
And stomach acid is just that. It's stomach acid. It is acid. It's extremely acidic. It's way more acidic than coffee or soda or high fructose corn syrup or any of these foods that we're eliminating from our diet. It is pure acid. And it's there for a very good reason. It's there because we need to, you know, we start digesting our food through chewing it, but then it goes into the stomach and that starts to acidify it. It starts to liquefy it because it's acid. It chemically liquefies your food um, and gets it ready to go into the small intestine, which there it's, it's further um, broken down and, and absorbed and can be absorbed, um, which just absorbed just means you know, ready to go into your body and be used. Vitamins, nutrients. Me, I'm gonna get a little sip of water. Um, and so it's really important to have good, strong, healthy, adequate stomach acid. And so um, I think just over the years, we've kind of gotten confused with, um, you know, stomach acid and dietary acid and thinking that all acid is bad. And so I guess the point I want to make is all acid is not bad. We need good, strong, adequate stomach acid in, in the stomach. And so here, here's the reason I don't like to talk about this too much is because if I don't... Um, if I don't teach this accurately, people can get confused and they can maybe do something illogical and hurt themselves. Um, so the, here's the thing. So when it comes to this, the acid in your stomach and people with GERD, people with reflux, people with LPR, oftentimes their doctors will put them on a, what's known as a proton pump inhibitor or we call them PPIs and those are acid inhibitors. So they diminish the body's production of, of stomach acid. Um, and so now instead of having good, strong, healthy, adequate stomach acid, you've got diminished stomach acid. And what does that mean? Well, it means that that food in your stomach is now, um, not getting fully digested or it's taking longer to digest. Um, and so now we know now that we've been using these PPIs very long term, and there's been a lot of studies conducted on them, there is no controversy. There's no question that long-term use of PPIs is not recommended if, if there's any way that you can avoid it um, and that there are there are some serious risks of, of using PPIs long term and again PPIs diminish your body's stomach acid um, so you guys don't mind me I'm gonna take a bite of this because I am so hungry Mm. I love this stuff. So yeah, so if you've been taking PPIs for a very long time, and I'm not telling anyone to stop taking their medication, and this is where people can get into trouble, when they learn about this or they hear somebody like me talking about it, they'll go throw out their PPIs and they go, oh, I'm going to become vitamin deficient. Oh, I'm going to get Alzheimer's. And oh, I'm going to have a heart attack. You, you don't want to go throw out your PPIs. If you're on a PPI, there's probably a very good reason. And you really want to work with your doctor to get off of those in conjunction with doing, you know, lifestyle changes like this in order to remedy your reflux naturally. Um, but it's not something you just want to go cold turkey off, off of, of your PPIs and throw them in the toilet. Okay, so... So that's number one, is understanding you need good, strong, adequate stomach acid in order to have ideal digestion and absorption of nutrients so that you don't become vitamin deficient and set yourself up for um, a number of different diseases that are a result of being vitamin deficient. So we need good, strong stomach acid. Um, one of the things that can happen when people throw away their medications is they can have one, they can have, um, well, if they have stomach ulcers, or even if you suspect you have stomach ulcers, you're not even sure, and you're taking a PPI, and then you quit taking that, those stomach ulcers can get out of control and you can bleed internally, okay? Because that suppressed stomach acid was kind of keeping those, those stomach ulcers at bay. 
So that, that's a real good example of why you don't wanna just throw away your PBIs. You wanna work with your doctor to wean yourself off of them or take something else in its place. Um, so now let's talk about dietary acids. So these are, the, these are the foods that we're eliminating here in this challenge, the common trigger foods for reflux, um, the foods that are highly acidic, because those foods, um, those foods don't create more acid in your stomach. That's not why we're eliminating those foods. So we're eliminating acidic foods because primarily because those foods, um, irritate the tissues of the esophagus, irritate the tissues of the lower esophageal sphincter, and can irritate the tissues of the stomach lining. Okay, and so when we're, remember when we have irritation of tissues repetitively long-term, then what we can end up is with is inflammation or chronic inflammation, which is just a response to that injury. So we have irritation, we have injury, we have inflammation. That's just the natural order of things. And if we have ongoing repetitive injury, then we have ongoing repetitive long-term inflammation, which is known as chronic inflammation. And usually when you're in a state of chronic inflammation, you're setting yourself up for all kinds of problems, all kinds of disease. So we want to avoid chronic inflammation. Remember, inflammation is a good thing. It's a life-saving mechanism. But if you're in a state of inflammation all the time, that's bad. So, so acidic foods can irritate injure and create inflammation of the tissues that are that are exposed to those acidic foods. So if you're eating a lot of junk food is one really good, really easy example. Junk foods, your cakes and pies and candy bars and cookies and sodas, all of those things that are just filled with processed fat, processed sugar, salt, uh, soy, all these processed foods. Um, those will irritate, injure the tissues and cause inflammation. And so then you've got, you know, you've got injury, you've got pain and discomfort, and you've, you're setting yourself up for pro more problems on down the road. So that's number one. That's why we're, we're minimizing or, or eliminating dietary acid. Okay, cigarette smoking is another really easy example of something that's highly acidic. The tissues are exposed to that highly acidic toxin that irritates, injures the tissues, and creates inflammation. Um, and so that's one. And so then another one is for those of you with LPR or even if you don't have the LPR, even with GERD, but especially LPR, we talked about this the other day, we talked about the dietary, um, enzyme known as pepsin, the digestive enzyme known as pepsin and how, um, when we have a little bit of reflux, that pepsin can come up and linger in the tissues of the throat and the esophagus. Um, and then the pepsin on its own, unactivated, is, is not going to harm you. But once it is exposed to anything acidic, so the acid in your food or the acid that's coming up from reflux, either way, but, I mean, you, you can control the food that you're eating with every meal. So if you're minimizing the acid exposure going down, remember that it's that acid combined with the pepsin that activates the enzymatic response. And what does that mean? It means it activates that, that pepsin that enzyme. And what does that enzyme do? It digests. It digests your flesh. It's a protein um, enzyme. And so it will go to work digesting the tissues of your throat and esophagus. And then again, we have irritation and injury and inflammation, pain and discomfort. So that's the difference between dietary acid and the acid in your stomach. The two are not the same. Um, obviously the, the acid in your stomach is extremely acidic. There's not, I mean, there's no, no food that will match the acidity of this, of the acid in your stomach, um, that I can think of anyway. I mean, we know how acidic this stuff is. You, you <laughs> um, Coca-Cola is a really good example of a very highly acidic, um, food. You could, you've probably seen, uh, um, experiments where they just put, food in jars of Coca-Cola and leave it overnight and just to see um, how acidifying that is, how, what it will, it will liquefy that food. It will, it will digest that food. Well, your stomach acid is even more acidic than that, but it needs to be. It needs to be in order to fully digest our food and get it ready to go into the, di into the digestive tract, into the small intestine. So, all right. So I hope that
that's clear. You guys be sure if that wasn't clear, if you have any questions, go ahead and post those below. I'm going to take off now and um, I'm going to relax for the rest of the evening and go and enjoy um, this pasta. It's still hot on the bottom. There's still a little bit of steam coming out of it. So, all right. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on Thursday.